Happy holidays, Food Heals Nation. I have three fun holiday announcements for you. First is I created a Food Heals holiday gift guide for all your healthy holiday shopping needs so you can get discounts on all our favorite products for the holidays, discount codes for vitamins, skincare essentials, wine, Food Heals swag, air filters, water filters, books, and more. Find the perfect gift for that wellness lover in your life over at foodhealsnation.com slash gift guide. That's foodhealsnation.com slash gift guide. Also this week, we've got some amazing Black Friday deals from Cured Nutrition, which makes potent CBD products that heal, save up to 50% off plus free shipping using the code FOODHEALS, like 50% off oils and tinctures. You can save $54 off the Daily Dose Bundle, which includes Rise, Aura, and Zen. Check out all these deals and more at curednutrition.com slash foodheals. And the Black Friday deals continue with Organifi. Get free shipping on all orders with gold pumpkin spice. Yum. Starting today through the end of the month, the 31st. You can shop all the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals from now until November 27th. And those are spend $100 and get 20% off plus free shipping using code FOODHEALS. If you spend $150, you get 20% off free shipping. Plus you'll get Digest, Turmeric Plus, and Focus added automatically to your order. Then on Black Friday only, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping on anything you order. It's all over at OrganifiShop.com slash Food Heals. Happy Healthy Holidays, Food Heals Nation. You're listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. Happy Thanksgiving. If you're celebrating, I hope you are surrounded by people you love, people who light you up, and I hope you're nourishing yourself with delicious food and maybe some wine. Speaking of wine, did you know that not all wine is created equal? Between glyphosate in the soil to fish bladder finding agents, gross, I know, most of our wine is chemical-laden garbage. But don't worry, because today's guest is pioneering a solution and has created a brand new wine company, High Vibrational Wines, that is organic, chemical-free, and vegan. Yes, please. You remember JJ Flazanes from multiple episodes of Food Heals. She is an empowerment strategist and creator of the Empowering Minds Network. She hosts multiple podcasts, 13, 14, 15, I think I've lost count, but her most popular show you may know is Spirit, Purpose, and Energy. And her show, All About Wine, is something to whine about. JJ and I are both wine enthusiasts and also health nuts. So how can we be both? How can we enjoy our wine without chemicals, without hangovers? That was the problem that JJ set out to solve when she came to me saying, I'm making an organic wine that will also be forever chemical free and vegan. So I was like, sign me up. And so she did. In today's episode, you'll learn exactly how she did it. You'll hear me taste test live on air and you'll learn how you can get your hands on this wine and how you as a Food Heals listener can save 20% off your high vibe wine. Let's dive right in. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. All right, Food Heals Nation, please join me in welcoming JJ Flazanes back to the show. She is the creator of the brand new company, High Vibrational Wines. JJ, I'd love to have you reintroduce yourself, remind Food Heals Nation a little bit about who you are and what you do, because it's been a while since you've been on the show. And then we're going to get into the wine. I'm so excited. Hi, everyone. Yeah, it feels like it's been a while. It has. But now you have something really exciting to share with us. And as a wine lover and person who also loves things that are clean, organic, vegan, glycosphate free, all of the things, I'm so excited about this product. So share, share away. Okay. Hi, everybody. I know many of you because you are listening to my show too. <laughs> but um, but for those of you that don't know me, I'm JJ Flozanes. I am an empowerment strategist. I am the creator of the Empowering Minds Network and the host of my flagship show, which is Spirit, Purpose, and Energy. 
And I was a personal trainer for a long time, turned empowerment strategist. So I love all things health and wellness. And I also have a podcast called Something to Whine About with Michael Neely and Doug Sandler. And it just became the obvious choice when I was looking for, over the years, a product to bring into the world. And I'll give credit where credit is due. Joyce Dales of Cold Be Gone and uh, Buzz Go Go. She was the one that looked at me like I was like I had two heads <laughs> when I said I just don't know what product to do. And she says I know. And she said wine. And I thought I can't believe I didn't figure that out. But I was like, yeah. oh my god, thank you so much. So last year, I think it was 2022, in my Inner Circle Mastermind, I I think jo- Joyce and I had done an interview and maybe right before that. And, uh, and I kind of got the idea and then I started, I wasn't in a rush, but I was putting it out there to find who to work with. And I think that was the biggest challenge. It wasn't what I would do with the wine or anything on my end. It was more of who's the partner, who's the, where's the wine coming from exactly. And how does this all kind of unfold? And then I interviewed when we were doing something to wine about up in Paso, I interviewed Nita Mattel of LXV Winery. And I mean, we were like soul sisters in a half a second. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> her wine was exquisite. Her passion, her her everything about her. And I just thought, oh, I would like to talk with you. And so then she sort of took me under her wing and started to help me and referred me all kinds of places. And then here we are, I came up with everything. And a year later or less than a year later, I have a wine label and I am now a winemaker. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. I feel like this is such a long time coming and a dream come true. And it's so needed in this space because like you and I are very similar. Like we are so health and wellness focused and conscious, but there's one thing that we're not giving up and it's our wine because it brings us so much joy. And so the thing about wines is it varies a lot on the spectrum of healthy to non-healthy. Like of course the doctors say a glass of red wine is great, but is that glass of red wine actually going to heal you? Or is that glass of red wine actually bad for you? And it completely depends on how the grapes were treated, the, you know, how the soil was treated. What is in the wine? Is it contaminated by these forever chemicals that are in our soil? And so you were like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out how to make it high vibe. I'm going to figure out how to make it organic. I'm going to figure out how to make it forever chemical free. And I'm going to figure out how to make it vegan thank you so much. So that's all I want in life is my wine to be clean and delicious and amazing. And that's what you did. So let's start out with a quick clip from your website, High Vibrational Wines, where you share your story. Roll it, Roxy. So why am I doing wine? Well, I've loved wine my whole life. And I've been wine tasting since I was even 17. I've been wine tasting all over the world. And as a health professional for many years, wine has some health benefits and wine has some non-health benefits. And one of the things as I was on my wellness path of keeping up the best health possible and eating super clean and things that are organic, things that aren't GMO, things that don't have pesticides, I found that of course wine can have a lot of pesticides in it. Wine can have something called glyphosate and glyphosate um, is is very disruptive to your body in many ways. So having a healthy lifestyle, eating grain free as much as possible, having organic, growing my own foods, not having, avoiding pesticides, having things be wild. Well, I want my wine to also be that too. But you know what I found when I kept going to the store or ordering wine online, I didn't like any of the organic wine. I didn't like the way it tasted. But over and over again, my favorite, wine region of California is Paso Robles. It has been, it's always been. And in Paso, there's wines that are sprayed and wines that aren't sprayed. But what I thought was, well, what can I do about this? Because I love wine and I don't wanna just drink a bottle of wine that's organic that tastes bad. What can I do to the wine that I love? Dr. Emoto wrote a book and did a study, well, did the study first, then he wrote the book, on how vibration and frequency affects water molecules. He took water and they would do an experiment where you would take different kinds of you know, bottles of water and have angry music and say hurtful things. And then on the other side, have loving music and, and symphonies and pictures and affirmations and speak nicely and give love and vibrational energy to the water. And then he would freeze the water and under a high powered microscope, he would see the crystallization of those water molecules and the ones that were talked too badly and had negative energy, looked kind of, you know, not, there was no shape or pattern per se, and it was just um, a blob. 
but the ones that had positive energy looked like beautiful snowflakes. And every word and every frequency had a different version and expression of that snowflake of that water. I took the principle of energy and thought, what if I raise the frequency of my wine? After all, wine is 85% water. So Food Heals Nation, we encourage you to watch the full video at highvibrationalwines.com because as great as it is to hear the audio, it's really interesting to see the video where you can see JJ in action, what she is doing to the wines to raise their vibration based on Dr. Emoto's study. You can see the visuals of the water's crystalline structures and how they change based on how they're spoken to, how they're treated. So I want to get into the Dr. Emoto study, but first, JJ, Take us through one of my other favorite parts, which is how you were able to make this wine forever chemical free. First, these forever chemicals, as you have mentioned, are forever chemicals. So they're out there. They are making their way into all different parts of our you know, water supply and into our soils. So what I can say about this wine, it is glyphosate free farming. So they are not spraying. Is the, you know, are, are some of them out there doing that? In fact, I think I was motivated by one of your posts a couple of years ago because you had shared, I think it's after you left California. Uh, and I felt like, oh, don't, don't, don't talk bad about California wine. You're like, don't drink Cal, you went to Trader Joe's and you're like, don't drink California wine. It all has glyphosate in it. And, and I know that a lot of it does. And yeah, which is why I, I agreed with you, but I was also looking for some of the vineyards that I have worked with and interviewed over the years, they don't use it, but they can't really claim organic or they can't claim certain things because it's a lot of money to get those labels. But yeah. one of the winemakers said to me, and when we were interviewing him, he said, look, we have to drink this too. <laughs> like we drink this wine. We don't want to be drinking these chemicals, but yeah. they're also not willing to pay the money sometimes to be tested because if you not tested, but to be labeled as organic or certified. So, you know, so they farm their own stuff. And, you know, a lot of people that come in and do tastings don't really care. But those of us, like you and me, and a lot of the doctors that I work with and, and cancer patients and people who are really very fine-tuned about their health, they're not putting their chemicals in their bodies and they want to make they're staying away from all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I agree. So part of it is the glyphosate, definitely 100%. I wanted to find glyphosate-free farming wine, but what was really more important to me because I have had and tried many of the organic wines on the market and I hate most of them. I won't lie. I don't like them. They taste bad. I know. Right? It's the sulfate free, the organic, some of them. You are like, I'm so happy that these exist. And then you bring them home and then you taste them with some friends and no one likes it. And you're like, well, F. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what you sought out to fix. I appreciate that. Well, I, as a as a podcaster doing wine podcasts and as a wine drinker for years and wine taster for, oh my gosh, going on with 30, I don't know. Yeah, 30 years. 30 years mm -hmm. I've been wine tasting all over the world. And I know what I like. And I love my wine like you do, but I'm not going to drink a glass of wine I don't like because it's organic and sulfite free. Right. I'm just not going to suffer through. Why would I even bother? But I know of wine that even if it did have something in it, I thought, well, I would rather have a glass of this not perfect wine that tastes amazing, that my body feels like a million bucks when I'm drinking it because those, those good vibrations will also play a role in how I metabolize or line up with the good and bad and the ugly within the wine. Now I'm not sure. out searching for, I don't want pesticide laden everything. I don't want, you know, lots of spraying on all sides. I don't want any of that anyway, but there's, there's a fine line between this is a, this is a celebration. Wine has been used in so many, you know, air date, date back to, you know, it was like a luxury and it was, it's a celebration and it's a, it's an art. It's like cooking. And you know that I cook. And so when you make wine, it's as intricate every step of the process from how it is, where the grapes are grown, the soil, the irrigation or lack of irrigation from how thick the skins on the, on the grapes are to how you press them to how long they stay in the juices with the skins and the stems to where they're, what kind of barrels are they in? What kind of environment are they in? I mean, there's so many steps to making wine. Mm -hmm. And I've learned about all of it and I've been interested in all of it and it's fascinating. And it, and just like cooking for those of you that cook, when you cook and, and start chopping and handling your, your vegetables and your, all the things that you're preparing, if you could take a step back and, and recognize that when you are literally 
making a home cooked meal, you probably eat less than when you come into a situation where you're starving, you're disconnected from the food emotionally. And now you're just sort of shoving your face. <laughs> like I can tell you because we're right before Thanksgiving, every Thanksgiving, every big dinner party, every big brunch, every mastermind event that I have here, I cook all of it. And then I have no appetite. And it's not because I'm not turned off. It's just because there's something very satisfying about being with your food or being with your wine or being with whatever you've created, your art. It's like art, right? There's this, there's this sense of, of emotional fulfillment that you get. And um, so yeah. for me, getting sort of my hands dirty, if you will, in wine um, feel, felt good. And so I searched out some of my favorite wines and, and vineyards up in Paso Robles. And made sure it was glyphosate free. That was the number one thing I had to do. Yeah. And then just started sort of tasting what was available. And I had some ideas about what I wanted to start with. And uh, I'm when it comes to white wine, even though the ladies that I'm working with at Pacific Wines, you know, they had a Chardonnay and I tasted it and I thought, okay, I don't like, I don't, no disrespect. I don't love white wines. Will I drink them? Yes. Do I enjoy them? Yes. But if I'm going to buy a good bottle of wine, it's not going to be white. So I thought, all right, let me taste the Chardonnay. And luckily it was perfect. And, uh, and it was so perfect. And I, but I couldn't, like, there was something in my ego that said, I can't sell Chardonnay. I don't drink Chardonnay. I can't sell Chardonnay. And they're like, oh, but you'll sell so much of it. I said, I don't care. I cannot shell, sell Chardonnay. <laughs> and then luckily that got bought out and it was no longer available for me when I was ready. So then what I really wanted was a rosé, right? Rosé all day. Rosé all day, baby. I would love for you to right now to go ahead and pour some into your glass of my Grenache Rosé. Okay. Food Heals Nation. So I just opened this. It is chilled. JJ, you sent it to me. It was, I believe, Friday. I received it, put it directly in the fridge. Now it is Monday that we're recording this. So this is a brand new tasting for me. And let me tell you about the bottle. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous woman with this stunning purple dress. And I'd love to hear more about the artwork during this podcast, JJ, but let me pour it and then I can do a tasting. Good, 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 good. good. I love that even though this isn't a video podcast, you can hear that. I did that very close to the mic on purpose. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I'll take a sip and maybe talk us through what should I be looking for? Well, first, before you sip it, let's do the nose. So go ahead and swirl around your glass and stick your nose in and smell it. Mm -hmm. I am not a Fraser when it comes to wine, but I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So normally. Floral. <laughs> no worries. So, but what's interesting about the nose on any wine is when you sort of swish it around, it, it brings up the aromas and then you smell it. Right. And sometimes it, that tells you a little bit about the flavor, but sometimes it doesn't, but having a good floral on the, or not floral, but having a good scent on the, on the wine uh, can help the experience. And it's interesting that the longer you have a wine open, it loses that. So the aromatics, when you first open a bottle is usually really strong. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are different, different things you might get from this wine. You might get some citrus, you might get some cantaloupe, you might get some mm. peach possibly um, on the nose and, and then go ahead and take a sip of it. Now, since you said that, it may be suggestion, but I do feel the peach and 100% floral. Okay, let me take a sip. Oh my gosh. It's so light. It's super refreshing. It's definitely light fruity, light floral, and it does feel like I'm on like a wine tasting tour. <laughs> Okay. So let's talk about rosés. I even took a bottle of this to one of my favorite restaurants here in Ojai, the Duchess. And when I poured it, they, the, one of the managers said to me, thank you. Thank you for doing, Aww. thank you for doing rosé correctly. And I said, uh, what does that mean to you? And he said, it's not too sweet. I had gone. Yeah, it's not too sweet. I agree. Right. There are, it's very balanced. There are some yeah. rosés. I'd gone to a bar that had like a, a really nice dinner event happening and they were launching their wine, their red and their white. And I remember tasting, tasting their rosé and I thought, <laughs> this tastes like water. Like, wow, what is this? This tastes That's like not nothing. This tastes like nothing. I'm like, I like my fruit in my, in my wine. Why would you want to drink something that literally doesn't taste like fruit at all? Same. But that's me. Okay. So yes, this rosé is from Grown in Paso Robles, 100% Paso Robles. It's 2022. And again, it's a Grenache grape. 
and it's called Kist. So each of the wines have a name and each of the wines have a guided visualization that I'm still editing. So you don't have them yet, but you will. Okay. And, uh, and it's to bring, <laughs> it's to bring forth a frequency within you. So let's back up for a second and talk about a little bit of what I, and you can keep drinking, of course. Oh, I will. Uh, talk about why I, what, what did I do? Like, why am I doing wine? Okay. So I mentioned that I want to do it because I wanted to find wine that I, that tasted good, that was glyphosate free, but past that, uh, use Dr. Emoto's study. So for those of you that haven't heard of Dr. Masuro Emoto, he wrote a mm -hmm. New York Times bestseller called The Hidden Messages in Water. Mm -hmm. And this water study, I know you've all heard of it. it you, maybe you haven't heard directly of the study, but I know you've seen the bottles that have etched in them affirmations, or you've heard that you talk to your water, it changes the molecular structure of how water is expressed and how I even describe it in the video is if you think about talking to your plants, right? Most people understand that if you give a plant attention, if you give a child, if you give an animal, if you give a person positive attention, they respond well, they like it, they feel good and you can see it show up in how they treat you or what they're saying or how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing for water, but what Dr. Emoto actually did was to take pictures. He froze water molecules. He froze the water. He took microscopic pictures of them and you can see how water gets expressed in different environments. And so I'd invite you, it's on my page. You can check it out. You can Google it. You can look at hidden messages in the water, Dr. Emoto, and you can see what each word and frequency does to the expression of each water molecule. And it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I actually was trying to find somebody who would do the study for me, not this first round. But the more I was searching and the more that I'm reading the book and going back, going back into it, I actually think I can do it myself. So that mm -hmm. might be the goal for the next year or the year after is for me to do the study to show you and to prove that what I'm doing to the wine is changing its frequency. So this is absolutely fascinating. So I looked this up so I could have a really comprehensive understanding of this. So let me play a short clip for Food Heals Nation. This is from the documentary. It's called Dr. Emoto Hato Water Crystals Full Documentary 2017, which you can find on YouTube. Let's roll the clip. Professor Korotkov's laboratory has conducted numerous experiments on the effect of human emotions on water. A group of people were asked to project onto a flask of water in front of them very positive emotions like love, tenderness, and concern. Then, the flask was replaced with another one, and the people were asked to project emotions of a different type. Fear, aggression, hatred. After this, measurements were taken on the samples. The water exhibited changes that were clearly in one direction or another. So love increases water's energy levels and stabilizes the water, while aggressive emotions reduce the energy and make radical changes in the water. I hope to show people through my research that water has a memory of its own. Dr. Emoto's laboratory does research on water samples, which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. With modern technology, it is possible to structurize water artificially. When seeds were grown under laboratory conditions using this kind of water, the soy sprouts had six times greater photon radiation than when ordinary water was used. Using structurized water makes vegetables ripen faster and increases the amount of useful microelements and vegetable proteins several fold. If we look at the shoots, the treated ones were long, even, and strong, while the untreated ones were short, thin, and weak. If we look at the plants today, those from the selected seeds have all ripened, but the ones from non-selected seeds have not. 
We have to say that using structurized water really does affect the growth of vegetables and fruits. So if they have proven that we can positively affect the water that helps the vegetables grow stronger and even increases their nutrition, and wine is 85% water, it makes sense to practice this on the wine. So what are you doing, JJ, to the wine to change the frequency? Because I think that's the most fascinating part of your particular wine making process. I don't know anyone else that's doing this. Of course, we know that I'm obsessed with the fact that it's vegan because Food Heals Nation knows not all wine is vegan. Many winemakers use animal derived binding agents like blood and bone marrow and protein from boiling animal parts, fish bladder membranes, among other disgusting things. But anyway, what is different about your wine is not only that it's vegan and forever chemical free, but it's also high vibration. And you're using those principles of this Dr. Emoto study to raise the frequency of the wine. So take us through how you're doing that. So first, after I do the blends, and this is 100% Grenache Rosé, there is no blend. It is, it's just one single grape and grape juice. Okay. But that went into a stainless steel barrel. And then okay. I have a French oak barrel where the red blend went into after we created the blend, after we did okay. all different. We'll taste that one next. You're going to taste that one next. And, mm -hmm. and so what I did, and again, all these videos are sort of on that video on the page, but I put crystals underneath the barrels. I put um, selenite crystals. Selenite is a clearing stone. It's a white stone. And if you look at the correlation between the color of crystals and your chakras, it's white, it's angelic, it's pure source energy. It is a clearing stone and we mm. use it in all ways to, you know, to help charge other crystals and to cleanse other crystals. So I wanted to have two, and they're actually shaped in the shape of a heart, two heart shaped selenite crystals underneath each barrel to just sort of anchor and protect the wine. Now, what I also did, and that's just the first step, there's a million things. Okay. So as I, after <laughs> I put those down, I also use some Palo Santo and I cleanse the area where it was. So I'm, I'm working with Pacific wines and they have, you know, a lot of clients that have like many, many barrels. And here's JJ with her two little barrels. I got my one little, my one little stainless steel barrel and my one little French oak barrel. And I am shoved up into a corner because I said, can I be near a plug? which I'll get to why that's important. So I'm, I've got two little barrels, okay. my cute little barrels next to this plug. And I'm walking around burning, say burning Palo Santo and smudging and clearing the area around my barrels. Uh -huh. Then I took pictures. I took high vibrational pictures. So when you, if you look into Dr. Emoto's study, you'll see that symphonies and music and pictures of dolphins and and ocean sounds and scenes and love and affirmations. These are all things that raise the frequency of water so that it expresses like a beautiful snowflake versus mm. if you put it in an environment that's disconnected, that's violent, that's angry, that's sad, that's low vibration, those water crystals end up expressing like a blob. Like they don't, they look bad. They look diseased. They don't look, they're not shaped like a beautiful snowflake. So, so I put all these pictures on the barrels. I taped them to the barrels. And each barrel had an I love you uh, picture on it. So in a way it had an affirmation. I just didn't write it. It was just in a picture. So then I put crystals, a couple of other crystals on the barrels. Like I taped them to the barrel. So they had rose quartz crystals and uh, amethyst and malachite crystals. And then, so here's, here's the extra JJ effort. I mm -hmm. have an earthing blanket. So I don't know if you have ever had Clint Ober on the show, but earthing is the concept of using earth's energy to neutralize negative frequencies and to ground your nervous system and your mm -hmm. immune system by, again, just the, the charge of the earth against and anchoring us back into our bodies. So I took an earthing blanket, which is why I needed the outlet, because in order to use an earthing blanket, which is basically bringing the earth inside, it's bringing the power of standing. It's like when you go on vacation and you've been outside a lot, whether it be camping in the woods or at the beach, you feel this sense of calm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of it is because you're on vacation and you're, you don't have the same stresses of daily life. But the other part is because you're literally, you're being in nature. Your body is mm -hmm. constantly touching sand, water, grass, dirt, earth. You're in the environment of all of that power that the earth, that the, that the charge of the earth that it gives and you're absorbing it into your body, which is neutralizing negative effects of EMF, of stress, of anxiety, of depression, of lack of immunity. 
So earthing is going to bring us back into balance. And so you, when you bring earth inside, you have to look at your outlets to make sure they're grounded. And then you basically, it's like just a, it's not a, a plug, so to speak. It is a plug, but it's a, it's like one little wire that you put into the outlet, which then brings the charge into the earthing blanket to provide that earthing energy. Wow. So that's one step. Now, the next step was I took crystals, more crystals. And again, the crystals I use were quartz, which is also one of the highest vibrational crystals. It's a white crystal. Mm -hmm. It's also a clearing crystal. And just again, a very high frequency angelic like crystal. I use malachite, which is green and it is a heart chakra also. So green, any greens and, and the pink, the rose quartz is also heart chakra, but I wanted to bring in love. I wanted to bring in passion. I want to bring in power. I want to bring in purpose. And then of course we have amethyst, which is a purple stone and that's third eye, but that's also a protective amethyst. You, you use amethyst to protect yourself from negative energies. You want to put it in your doorway so that when people walk in, they get cleansed. You want to just have it sort of around. Um, and it's just a very powerful, again, and third eye intuition and clearing and, and uh, protection crystal. So I used all of those crystals and I, I actually hand sewed them in bags on both sides of the earthing blanket. And then, wow. so then I laid the earthing blanket on top of the barrels and it stayed there for months. Now, one more thing, well, actually two more things. Uh, so, so the, so this wine, while it sat in the barrels and while it was being aging, if you will, and soaking in some of the great wood from the, um, from the French oak barrel, it was also being charged. So again, it was protected from all other energies around and they have good energy up there, but you know, it's not, it's, it's not, it's a very small shop. So it's not like it was mass, you know, mass produced. There's like a lot of people there. It's a very, you know, it's run by women. So they, they knew what I was doing. Uh, I'd, I'd go up there periodically to see where we were, were with the wine and I would also Reiki it. So I would get into alignment. I would do a meditation and then I would send my positive energy over the barrels. And I did that a couple of times. So. So that's how the wine sat. It it was it was in that space, in that energy for months until wow. we bottled it. So before we go to bottling and then what happened next, I'd like you to taste. Now you open this bottle. So it's a young, it's a younger wine. My wine, this red wine, is gonna age very, very well. Normally when people have when you have a winery, you bottle, let's say you're bottling 2021, you're holding it until 2022 until you sell it. Because okay. again, you're having the aging process. So my wine's young, but what I discovered through tastings and holding uh, wisdom, wellness, and wine circles and filming and, 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 you know, having my groups is that when we opened up the bottle the first time, and this is only through, I learned so much, uh, things I didn't even know <laughs> before, like when you, when you filter wine, when you bottle it, cause I took it to Mexico for my mastermind retreat. And when I, we had it, it was exactly the way that I tasted it in the barrel. But when mm -hmm. you bottle it and you filter it, it breaks apart the aroma chemical, the aroma compounds so that you, it takes a while for them to come back together. And for white wine or rosés, it takes about a month or six weeks. For red wine, it could take a lot longer, could 30 days, but it's still going to mature. And that's what you want. You want to have a wine that sort of over time can really stand the test of time and get better and better and better. So I had you open the wine right away because even without it being, with being a young wine, there are some characteristics that actually people like a lot. So did you, what did you think about the red when you first opened it? Okay. So I opened it last night because you said to do it the night before we were going to podcast. And so the notes that I wrote down, and again, no Fraser here, not an expert wine taster. I enjoy my wine, but here were my impressions. I wrote rich, dark, purpley. <laughs> Purpley as in purple, that's just a way that my mind went to describe it. I wrote bitter aftertaste that would go well with a sharp vegan cheese. Hmm. <laughs> so great. So the, so when you first open it, it's a it's a cabernet, it's a blend. It's a actually it's four different varietals, but the majority of it is cabernet 85% and okay. from Paso Robles and I it has a cherry uh, it has a bit of a hint of cherry. So cherry is usually kind of something people taste in a Pinot. Um, it's a little bit lighter. And I know you thought it was rich. Wait till you have it now. Uh, so when okay, you, okay. Because okay. now it's been 24 hours. Now it's been 24 hours. And so when you first open it, it does taste like a Pinot. And funny, I had some friends here to help with the first Wisdom, Wellness, and Wine Circle where we did this filming. 
and and their wine a couple of them are they're wine drinkers and a lot of them liked it right out of the bottle because they like pinot so like see now i can drink this but then what we did was we tasted it against a bottle i had opened the night before and mm. that was like whoa it was so different so i'd love for you to taste it now oh my gosh okay that's exciting all right i'll pour a little glass and see okay see what you think if you can taste the difference all right, so I'll do a, sn a smell test first. Well, now I smell cherry, and I'm not sure if it's because <laughs> you said it, but oh my gosh, I do. I smell fruity, like cherry, like it smells like a darker version of what I make in my smoothies. Okay, let me give it a taste. And I'll explain a little bit more of what's in this blend. Girl, I don't know what this is, but this is so good. Isn't it better than yesterday? Yeah, this is so good. Okay. Now, one day, probably in a year from now, um, you can open it the first day and it'll be like that. <laughs> but it's going to be a <laughs> it, it, going to be a minute. So, okay. So in order for me to have a Paso Robles wine, and I did taste a lot of what they had offered to me. And again, I, I like cabs, but cab is not my first favorite. And it's because a lot of cabs aren't as fruity as I would like them to be. So this is 85% Cabernet. It's Then I decided to blend it with three of my other favorite grapes to try to get the fruit component that I wanted. For me, a full body red has a characteristic of, and again, this is a mouthfeel. So when you're drinking wine, there you have three different parts of your palate. We have what happens on your tongue right in the front when you first drink it. There's the middle of your palate, like how it sits in the middle of your tongue, and then whether it has a finish and you can feel it going down your throat. Okay. Mm, and okay. some wines have all three, some wines have one, some wines have two. I like, I wanted to hit all. So that front of the mouth feel to me is where the fruit comes in, um, mm -hmm. front and the middle. And then to have a nice finish, sometimes you want oak or some kind of peppery feeling. So I added 5% Zinfandel, 5% Syrah, and 5% Tempranillo. And okay. that blend gave me the mouth feel and the profile that I love, which is again, fruit with a little bit of spicy. And then you get that French oak kind of silkiness that that has that happens in your mouth yes yeah so i don't know i i may have not used the correct words but this makes sense based on what you're saying and correct words i mean it's all interpretation right but when i said bitter i meant it in a way that i love how wine tastes with food and so the way that it tasted with food is i was thinking that it would taste really good with some of those more I don't know, um, sharper cheeses, garlicky type of things. But now today, I actually think it is more fruity. Mm -hmm. And so that might taste um, better with different, like, I, I picture it more with like a chocolate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's just my interpretation, but it makes sense based on what you just said. Well, and yesterday, I'm not a big Pinot drinker, but if I when I do drink a Pinot, I, I want to have food with it. It's an absolute. But see, now... This does it not feel better? Like you could just drink a glass of it without food? Yeah, girl, I already had dinner, so I'm drinking this alone. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, in order to keep the vibration of this wine, uh, what I created was little necklaces of crystals that hang on the bottle. And yes. it's one of three crystals. And that's kind of to anchor after it gets bottled to continue to anchor the frequency. I can also tell you that half of the wine is here at my house and the other half is up in Paso. And the wine that's here at my house is literally under the earthing blanket that's turned on with all the crystals. So you're, so the wine that you have in your hand literally continued to be charged here at my house before I shipped it to you. So we're talking about a lot of personal touch. This is not the difference between obviously me as a little, you know, boutique wine producer versus yeah. the mass people who put them in the, in the grocery stores. When you have a massively produced wine that you can buy for 20, 30 bucks, 10 bucks, whatever, right? Like nobody's touching that wine. Like that wine is not seeing a human. <laughs> like, uh, it is. And it's, it's just, you know, chugging through that process and it's, there's no attention to it. And so therefore, well, you know that it's compromised. Let's just be honest. Right. Well, it's just like with anything, you know, you go to farm to table food, you know, you know that someone is, they just picked it and they're just, you know, it's fresh. Well, it's right. the same thing here. This is not sitting on a shelf forever because there's not that much of it. I didn't, I, I made this investment to do this and, you know, I'm a, I'm a little, little guy and I wanted to test out the theory to see who like me cares about 
how their wine is charged, how the energetics. Did you say I am? I do. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Well, again, so here's the thing about the vibration and frequency of your food, of your wine. Think about giving, I'll give you the, the, the scenario again of being on vacation. When you're on vacation and you sort of eat things you don't normally eat, but your body seems to handle it better. I'm sure that's happened to you, right? Oh, don't talk about Italy. I mean, I <laughs> ate all the things and I still like lost weight. I was like, oh, what's right. happening? Again, why? A, your frequency was high. Now, I don't know, but, and I'm, and if you're in Italy, the food's high too. But let's just say you weren't in, right. in a place where the food was high. But because your frequency is higher, your body will metabolize it better. It will, again, yeah. you will be not in alignment with the bad things and you'll be in alignment with the good things. Like your body will do what it's supposed to do and filter things that aren't good for you. And it'll do a better job of doing that when the food or drink is high vibration and you are high vibration. So this yes. is why I kept saying, what can I do to the wine I love? I love Paso. I love the way it tastes. I can't guarantee it's always going to be 100% chemical free because it's farming and people spray things to help with the bugs because it's their livelihood. They're not using glyphosate that I can tell you, but you know, but I don't want to have to try to uncover again, cause I don't like the wines that I keep tasting that are supposedly super clean in every way, shape and form. They taste bad. So I thought, what can I do to the wine I love? I can raise its frequency. I can raise its frequency. I can raise my frequency. And I can trust that my body is going to filter it the way that it's supposed to. And it's going to get rid of the things my body doesn't need. I love that. And I appreciate everything that you've told us today. And I think it's really important to note that, you know, this is the Food Heals podcast. And so I always talk about how I leave room for my um, let's say vices. And so whether it's a glass of wine or a piece of chocolate cake, when I eat the piece of chocolate cake or drink the wine, I'm in celebration and happiness. I'm never in shame, blame. This is going to make you, you know, fall off your diet, fat, blah, 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 all the things. I'm not in that space. And I know what that space is because I've been in that space, right? We've all been in that space. We're like, oh my God, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to, and I'm so bad. And that is not the vibration to be at, right? When you're having your enjoyment meal, some people call it a cheat meal, whatever you want to call it. It's like, no, if your vibration is high, you're going to metabolize it differently, just like you said, JJ. And it improves the entire experience of the food. I'm all about mindful eating and mindful drinking. It's like, I'm going to enjoy this wine. And I think that it's going to nourish my body because of the high vibes you put into it, because it's organic, because it's vegan, because it's not processed through fish bladder, which is, I believe a trauma to the fish. Like that's just my opinion, right? So I'm going to enjoy this wine and it's going to nourish me rather than two buck chuck from Trader Joe's drinking because you're sad or you hate your, I don't know, something, and you're just like doing this out of sadness or anger, that's a totally different vibration. So not only have you put your own healing vibrations into this, but it's also our intention with it as well. So I think that's really a beautiful idea when it comes to how we consume our wine. Well, I also created something called Wisdom, Wellness, and Wine Circles. And, you know, I'm getting thirsty, so I'm going to pour myself a little bit here of a uh... Why haven't you already, please? <laughs> so um, so what I have is part of next year's batch right now. Um, oh, am I so Okay, 2024? Uh, well, I, I, this is a 2021 grape and juice, but 2024 is when I will release it after I blend it and then do my, you know, do my high vibe and stuff. So um, okay, it hasn't okay. been treated yet fully, but it, I just got it. I got this sample literally this week and uh, was nice. so excited Well, last week. And I was so excited because I'm working with a winemaker who is like royalty in Paso. And I'm so excited to, to have the legacy of being a part of sharing their grapes. So anyway, I'm still in the, and then I go back up to Paso to blend for the next year. So um, yeah, I, this concept is not because, you know, this is a, this is a specialty wine. This isn't a wine you would necessarily be pouring and drinking while you're cooking dinner necessarily. It would be something that you would do intentionally. Now I'm not saying you can't drink it alone. You can drink it alone, but if you're, but it's intentionally, that's the whole point. It is having that, like you just talked about your cheat meal or your, your, your indulgent meal or your, like your frequency wants to be higher, which is why I've created some guided visualizations to even get you into a better frequency if you're going to drink it alone or with a partner or take okay. it to the next step and have deep conversations with people, have meaningful interactions with people 
while you're enjoying this to again, open everybody's hearts up to connect on a, on a, on a level that just creates this positive momentum for the world so that we can elevate this planet to a more conscious level. And that was the other part of this wine for me is because I don't, I'm not just saying, Hey, go drink my wine. It's drink it intentionally, share it with people you love, engage in conversation that's stimulating, that's conscious, that's, that, that sends out a message that elevates the frequency of the planet so that while you're engaging in this, you're also helping everybody else while you're doing it too. So it, it kind of hits all the levels and that's why, and again, there's a limited amount of it. I just need to say that again, there's a limited amount of it. So, uh, because I only did one barrel of each and a barrel, you know, gives you about 250 bottles per barrel. So I, I started off with less than 500 bottles. Um, and I have been selling it. So, but I, I want to share it with the people who it's right for, who the people who like you and I love their food, love their wine and want to drink. Cause here's the other thing. I took this chance as a business and thought, you know what, if I don't sell any, okay. So I now have a lot of really great wine. I feel really, really, really good about drinking. <laughs> so because <laughs> in this house, we drink expensive wine all the time. We drink, mm -hmm. I mean, I go to, you know, I like to meet the winemakers. I, I like to know where the grapes are grown. I, I want to know the people that made what's in the bottle. I have a personal connection with all the bottles I buy. And now I have a, a lot of my own. And maybe if you, all of you would like some of it, you can have some too. <laughs> so Absolutely. Well, I love that. And of course, Food Heals Nation, you know you can get this at a discount for 20% off. Thank you, JJ, at highvibrationalwines.com. And the discount code is Food Heals 20. So you can save 20%. But I'm with you, JJ. Like as entrepreneurs, we have these beautiful ideas and then we have to test them. And yours, you're so fortunate that you're like, okay. If for any reason this doesn't work out, I got the best wine in the world for my friends, my family, and you know, you have all your podcast guests and you have multiple podcasts. You have the something to whine about podcasts. And when everyone comes to your events, you have the wine. But I think this is going to be huge. But again, it is limited. So if you're listening to this right now, try it out for the holidays, bring it home. Because I think the thing about it, JJ, and obviously I haven't tested this yet because I just got my two bottles, but when I have wine, that that is not treated and processed and absolute garbage from Trader Joe's. I love you, Trader Joe's. I'm just saying, okay? I don't have hangovers. And what does that tell me? It tells me that the wine is feeding my body, not destroying my body, right? So I'm excited for this wine to have over the holidays to be hangover free and to still wake up the next morning and be energetic and do my workouts and not be like, oh man, I had too much last night. Like I'm going to be like, oh man, I feel great. I feel high vibe. Tell me a little bit about the hangover and what, what should we expect? Obviously drink in moderation, everyone, but like it, there is a difference between wines. You can have one brand, two glasses in, you're hungover. You're like, what? I don't understand. I barely drank. And then other brands are like, I had an entire bottle and I feel amazing. And it's the difference in the processing of the wine, in my opinion. Some of it. Some of it is the alcohol, the, the percentage of alcohol per yes. glass of wine also. And my wine is, it's not low, but it's not high. There's a lot of wines okay. that have really high alcohol percentages, like 14.5, 15, even 16%. Uh, the red okay. here is 13.7. Mm-hmm. I think actually the, uh, the rosé is a little bit more, it's 14, but that is not, you know, and those aren't super high in Italy and in Europe, it used to be 12, sometimes even 10, which is why oh. you can, you could drink a lot of wine in Italy and not get drunk. Now, super Tuscans have taken over and now the alcohol content is a little bit higher. So that's part of it, but you're absolutely right. It is in the cleanliness of the wine, if you will, the frequency of the wine. And so far, so I've tested out, I took two, the first two bottles to Mexico and, Eight of us shared the whole bottle of rosé and the whole bottle of red. Now, there probably were other cocktails after that. I don't think I had too many after that, but there was no hangover and there was no headache. And then I had my six-month deep dive here, and then we went to dinner and shared, and between four of us shared, or five of us shared the same, a whole bottle of rosé, whole bottle of red. I asked them in the morning, anyone have a headache? Anyone feel dehydrated? Anyone feel, you know, any negative side effects? Nothing. Uh, the master, my mastermind last retreat this year, they were just here. We drank several bottles <laughs> and nobody complained of having a hangover or so far, <laughs> so far I have not had anyone who has had, like they've had several glasses. So it's not like they're getting a taste and they're done. I've had people who've had several glasses 
and have never said they felt badly in any way. Because some people will have a reaction to wine. So I can't guarantee that. I'm just, but based on the limited experience, but I have been sharing with lots of people, uh, people have said they, in fact, I, I got a positive feedback that someone felt uh, a little aroused um, after they <laughs> had some of the wine, like more than normal, and, and that they had a lot of energy more than normal after drinking the wine. So again, I can't guarantee mm. any of this. Of course, this is not, I haven't tested any of this. But I would say it's worth trying it because if you're someone who does get headaches or you do feel negative effects, but you love red wine, I would say try a bottle of mine and see how it goes. And if it's something you can drink, it would it's to be celebrated. It's to be honored. It's to honor yourself. It's not just a wine. And I wouldn't necessarily, I'd give it as a gift to someone who would really appreciate it. It'd be a great holiday gift for that. It'd be a great thing to use for, in fact, I'm going to take a bottle with us or more than one <laughs> to, to our New Year's Eve dinner, because I want my New Year's Eve to be this high vibe. And I don't want to drink, I don't, I don't want to have to drink somebody else's wine where I don't know if it was like where it's sad or who was around it or who other, whose energy got into that wine while they were working with it. You can, you can know that if you feel from me at all, uh, my sort of high vibe life, if you will, uh, like that, this is what I care about. This is what I do. Um, law of attraction, quantum physics, energy, energetics are all very important to me. And, and it is delicious. If you like really good red wine, my client from New Zealand said I ruined her. Um, <laughs> because she can't get this kind of wine in New Zealand. So she's going to have to come back and get some. Oh my gosh. Well, it is delicious. Well, I guess speaking of that, can you talk about where can you ship to? We know it's brand new and so there might be limitations. Where can you ship to over this holiday season? Well, this is a good question. Um, let's just say, let's keep it United States. If you are in a state that can't be shipped wine, Maybe I can ship you, wink, wink, some olive oil. Mm, okay. <laughs> How do they order that from the website? The same way they would order wine. <laughs> Got it. Uh, okay. But it, I might need, I might need a, 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 after you buy it, send me the receipt and a note. Uh, you know, if you're in a, in, in a state that has really strict laws about receiving alcohol, um, you could also ship it to someone you're going to visit in a neighboring state <laughs> or for the holiday and mm -hmm. drive it back with you when you come home um, or put it in your suitcase, uh, your check-on bags, check check bags, of course, not your carry-on. And uh, and there are wine bags. you can, I always wrap it in clothes. I mean, I've never in the like 20 years I've been bringing wine with me all over the world. I've never had a problem, uh, but they do sell sort of plastic wine uh, bags that you can also use if you're going to buy it somewhere and then ship it back with you or take it back in your, in your check bag. And usually, uh, some countries have different, although I can't ship to Mexico. So I'd say if you're in Mexico, you can take two from the States back into the country that I know, cause I did that this year. Um, otherwise I can ship anywhere in the U S right now. Okay. So if anyone has any questions, the website is highvibrationalwines.com. How can they get in touch with you if they have specific questions like that? JJ at jjflizanes.com. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Well, this has been so educational and exciting. I think it's most exciting for me and probably Food Heal Station, like people like us who are like, I want to continue my wellness journey, but wine is going to be included on that wellness journey. And so to know that we have options that are going to make us high vibe, that are going to, in general, we, like you said, we can't guarantee anything, but most likely you're less likely to have a hangover. Let's say you're less likely to have negative side effects. Let's say when we know it's organic, vegan, high vibe, all of the things forever chemical free, like those are such important things. And unfortunately, cheap wines in general don't have that. And I'm not saying I'm never going to buy a cheap wine because like send me to a party and I'm going to bring some cheap wine. Like that's just what happens. But in general, we can choose better things when we are at home. We can choose better things with our loved ones. We can choose better options for our celebrations. And so it's out just in time for the holidays. I'm so excited. I love the Grenache Rosé. I love the red. I think they're both fabulous. I'm not bullshitting. Like I actually really, really enjoy both of them. And I'm excited to finish both my glasses tonight, JJ. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? 
Yeah, the one thing I forgot to do last time my camera guy was here was to film a video to explain the wine club. So for those of you that don't taste wine, you don't go wine tasting in different places, you, you won't know what this means. A, a wine club is generally free. And my business model is that I would love to attract the people who care about high vibrational wine. That again is glyphosate free, vegan, and high vibrate high vibrating for you. Um, and mm -hmm. and again in an intentional way to become members of the wine club. Now currently it's fifteen percent off, but you're getting twenty percent off with Allison at Food Heals. And all that means is that so you, I've already discounted like the bottles when you buy more of them. But when you when you sign up just for and it only takes two. You have to buy two bottles to be considered in the wine club. And all that means is that you're signed up for the shipment next year. That's it. You just buy two bottles, you get your 20% off. And then you you're if you like them and you can cancel at any time, you can say, Hey, I'm interested. I love this concept. I want wine. That's good for me. And next year I'm going to be doing three and you don't have to have three, but the, the three will be, um, a blend of something that's mostly Zinfandel, a blend that's something mostly Syrah, and then I'm doing a sparkling. I'm so excited. Ooh. It's a sparkling Grenache Rosé. All right. So these are the three that are going to be released in either April or June. I'm leaning towards April, but we'll see next year. So then I would probably be shipping out in May. And so, so if you love them and you sort of, and it would, at this point would be one or two shipments a year of two bottles. Okay. Like not a huge, of course you can continue using your discount to buy more. If you love it and you want to give it as gifts, you want to have really good wisdom, wellness, and wine party intentional gatherings, which I could help you with and do free tastings with you on zoom. You can get some bottles, get some friends, and we can do a free tasting and I can walk you through it. Um, but that's all that means. So it's just, you're just joining a club saying that I love this wine and I want to be on the list and I want the first pick of the bottles when they come out. And, and again, you can cancel anytime and it's free and you continue to get discounts on any purchases that you make after that. Well, sign me up. I'm totally in. I <laughs> I love this idea. I think it's a great concept. So it's all over at highvibrationalwines.com. You've also got two podcasts that I think a lot of our listeners may already listen to, but in case you're new, we've got something to whine about if you're interested in the wine. And of course, your flagship number one show is Spirit, Purpose, and energy anywhere else, JJ, you want them to follow you online, stalk you, all that good stuff. Well, we've got Instagram, high vibrational wines. We've got Instagram, JJ Flazanes and everything else exists at jjflazanes.com. Oh yeah. Did you like my Instagram video? I made hilarious. You? Oh my God. It was hilarious. <laughs> and I was telling everybody about it and it was so funny. And that's why I saw the bottle and I'm like, wait a minute. She had more than a sip. <laughs> I told her just to take a taste. Looks like she liked it a little bit more than I thought she would when she first opened it. But no, it was hilarious. I liked it a lot and I did it for the content. So you're welcome. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that you like it better now after it's been breathing for a day. Yeah, no, it's very, very good. I want to... um pair it with the different meals. So that's what I'll have to do over the holiday season. So thank you so much for sending these. I'm so excited. I love them. Well, thank you for sharing this message with people. Again, of all the, of all the places to share the message of high vibration when it comes to food and drink and intention, Food Heals is the place to be. So I really appreciate you supporting High Vibrational Wines. Oh, thank you. Yes, back at gotcha. you. All right, Food Heals Nation. Oops, <laughs> I just hit the microphone with my wine. All right, thanks so much, JJ. We'll see you next time, Food Heals Nation. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you enjoyed that interview with JJ. Save 20% off your high vibrational wines by using code FOODHEALS20 at highvibrationalwines.com. Don't forget to download your free Food Heals gift guide with discounts on all our favorite things this holiday season and give the gift of health to that wellness lover in your life over at foodhealsnation.com slash gift guide. Happy Thanksgiving and cheers to your good health. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.